All right. So I am Maria Gould from California Digital Library. Delighted to be here today for the second session in this block right now. We are going to hear about growing up, in particular about the next phase for IGSN. And here to tell us all about growing up and the next phase for IGSN uh, is Lori Hack from Mighty Red Barn and Kirsten Leonard from the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory at Columbia University and the Interdisciplinary Earth Data Alliance and the IGSN EV, and Sarah Ramdeen from Columbia University and geosamples.org and Aida as well. So thank you all for being here today and I will leave it to you to take it away. Thank you so much for that great introduction. Um, I'm gonna ask everyone too in attendance if you wanna introduce yourself in the chat, that would be great as well. Um, my name is Sarah, and um, since we've already gone through the introductions, I'm just going to jump right in. So IGSN has been instrumental in driving community support for sample PIDs through uh, its thought leadership and innovative technical approaches. Over the last year, the IGSN 2040 project funded by the Sloan Foundation has engaged community members to develop a scaling strategy to ensure ongoing sample PID service provision. Today, we're going to review some of the strategic planning processes uh, explore some of the IGSN priorities and plans, and then ask you to contribute your ideas to IGSN's growing up and into the next stage. So while we're getting started here, we'd like to ask you two to open up your browser or on your phone and go to menti.com and then enter the code that's here on the slides, 89811164. We'll be using Mentimeter to capture structured feedback during the presentation. Um, and outside of Menti, please feel free to add comments into the chat or also to use the question box here on Cloudcast. All right, thanks Sarah for that fabulous introduction. So um, yeah, so when you start looking at strategies, as, we, as Sarah mentioned, we're gonna be using IGSN to illustrate um, how we do strategy and help an organization with scaling. We've heard a lot of different presentations um, today already at Pitapalooza talking about setting up consortia, consortia strategy, growth strategy, uh, uh, thinking through with an organization what it means to provide persistent services to the community. So IGSN is actually in that nexus right now thinking about uh, where it needs to go. So we're gonna use it and its experience with its IGSN 2040 uh, project to illustrate um, kind of the strategic planning process. Um, and our goal here is provide this short primer on how to do this. Very, very short. Um, so there's several, as you can see on the slide here, there's several different components uh, to a sustainable organization. Uh, first, you have to understand the needs of a society and understanding that those needs are going to change over time. So what are those evolving needs? Um, is there some kind of invention or innovation uh, that you can uh, create um, to address um, the needs of the society. Again, an innovation that continues to change over time to address those needs. Um, can you not only come up with that invention, but a unique activity set for an organization that can drive value? And I'm realizing that the slides are occluded by our pictures. So um, yeah, um, so driving value through this unique activity set. Um, and then through driving value, as somebody finds value, you can also then get funding. When people find something valuable, they will pay for it generally in one way or another. So driving the funding and revenue stream to support continued strategic investments um, and uh, continued refinement of distinctive resources and competencies for the organization. When this all starts rolling, you end up with a positive feedback loop that continues to uh, drive your unique, unique activity set, uh, your value proposition and funding for the organization. So this is really um, what we're going to be looking at. Um, if any one of these boxes is not fulfilled, this loop strength will diminish and sustainability will become a challenge over time. So in the next section that Sarah is gonna be looking at, we're gonna be asking you a series of questions to fill in these boxes. You can see those questions and the numbers on this diagram. Over to you, Sarah. Oh, okay. Um... All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch things and go to Mendy. So give me just a second to get this share up. You should be seeing the slides along with the Mendy screen now. Um, and as Laura said, we're going to be using IGSN as an example to fill in those boxes. 
Our goal with this activity is to foster a shared understanding of the elements of sustainability. And so we'll be using the Mentimeter polling system to gather your input on these four, sorry, five questions about the core service offerings and future value for IGSN. If you're not familiar with the IGSN, that's okay. You can still answer these questions. We're really interested in your perspective and experiences with PIDs and the PID ecosystem as well. All right, so let's move on to the first question. So what is the current core distinctive service offering that defines the IGSN brand? And if you're answering other, please add those other responses into the chat so we can capture those as well. All right, I'm gonna move on now to the next question. How distinct is the IGSN from other PID services? fun seeing the responses jump around in time as y'all respond. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to move on to the next question now. Uh, for the future, what should be the core distinctive service offerings that defines the IGSN brand? And again, if you're picking other for this, please go ahead and add in that response of what that other would be into the chat. And also, if you have any questions about the poll, please put them in the chat as well. Like if you need clarification on the questions or any of the terms. Okay, and let's move on to the next one. IGSN is in the process of modifying our operations to become more sustainable. How important is the speed of that change? those who can see me on video, I've just been joined by my cat. Okay, <laughs> we're going to move on to the next question. Um, how willing is the research community to invest in scaling the operations of a PID provider to commit to ongoing and future success of the pro provider? Okay, and we're going to pause the poll now and go on to back to the slides, but we'll return back to these results um, later in the presentation. So do keep Menti open, though. Kirsten, you're muted. There we go. No. Yep. Are you we can do you now? Oh, all right. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Um, so I wanted to just briefly summarize what the impact of the IGSN so far has actually been, and what uh, is the background for this strategic um, planning effort that we're currently going through. Uh, the IGSN has been around since 2005 and has since catalyzed an international sample community to use IGSN as a pit for material samples. 
to date, we actually have uh, 9 million IGSNs uh, that have been minted and have uh, now made it possible to unambiguously cite and track samples. The IGSN today needs to meet a completely new level of community demands. Uh, and that is on the one hand to grow sample registration services into the billions of objects and on the other hand, to support additional discipline stakeholders and countries uh, with a gro glowing, growing global participation. And on to Laura. Sure, thanks. We're running, yeah, okay, great. So I think Sarah, we're gonna do side-by-sides with the Minty results, right? Oh, sorry. I thought we were, um... Just a second. All right, so now we should be able to see the results. Great. Okay, and if you could go one more on the slides. Nope, on the slides, if you could go oh. advance one on the slides. And then back one on that. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, Perfect. <laughs> no, it's all fine. It's fine. You're trying to do everything over there, so thanks. Yeah. So um, earlier we had talked about, you know, what is what are those components of sustainability for an organization? So we can walk through um, these questions and looking at what is that current distinctive service offering. You know, most everyone talked about registration services for sample PIDs, right? Um, so that's in box one. That innovation. Um, that that IGSN um, has developed in the community, I think is broadly recognized as uh, services for sample pits, which is excellent. Um, along with that, those services, with that innovation, the services are ID registration, as we can see here, um, community engagement, uh, sample metadata, and community norms. So all of these things um, really uh, align very well uh, with what came out of the IGSN 2040 uh, strategic planning process. So that's great. Next slide. I mean, next, next, thank you. In terms of distinctiveness, how distinctive is IGSN from other PID services? We're coming in at distinctive, but not super distinctive. Um, and so that also is a driver for IGSN and saying, look, the technical solution of sample PID provision uh, through that, that registration service is great, but it's not enough to drive that distinctive offering uh, for continued sustainability of the organization. Um, this is one of the things that Kristen had in the bottom of the previous slide was looking at what are those other things that we can be doing. Um, so next, next result. So that was the next question we asked you is, well, what should the core distinctive service offering uh, be into the future for IGSN? Um, so again, here, a lot of people talked about registration services for sample PIDs still continue to do that. Um, more people answered this question about community engagement to drive the sample PID process. And that's exactly where uh, the 2040 project ended up, which is this idea of developing community of communities. And, and Kirsten will talk about this a bit as well, is not just providing the PID registration services, but also really engaging in, you know, broad, across broad communities, whether that's regionally um, or disciplinary, um, to engage with people and create the, um, the user knowledge uh, to be able to utilize the sample PID registration services um, and the benefits of accruing back to the back to the community. Okay, next one. All right. So as Kirsten mentioned, IGSN is in the process of modifying operations to become more sustainable. Um, so the big question there is how important is speed, right? How fast does this need to happen? Um, and you'll understand the relevance of this question <laughs> when we get to the next slide with Kirsten. Um, so again, here, uh, the answer was 3.4. So fast, but not super fast, right? So it's something that the community does feel would need to push on a bit. Um, so then I think there's one more question. So next one, um, which then feeds into, okay, how willing is the research community to invest? This number is actually higher than I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> Uh, about a 2.1. So it's not abysmal, but it's not exuberant, but there is some opportunity there in the community to help fund 
uh, movement of an organization from kind of that initial idea and initial service component into becoming a more sustainable, um, a more sustainable organization. So enough people really love what I just then is doing to really think about investing in it and continuing that flow and continuing to refine the offering. So that's really, really good news. Over to you, Kirsten. Okay. So this IGSN strategic planning process is really focused uh, on identifying our future value proposition and growth path to get there. And in taking that step, we have to determine why and how we can scale up. And it is critical to work with our community. And uh, as Laura already said, it really isn't a community, but it's multiple communities, uh, very diverse communities that we're working with uh, to figure out how fast we need to grow to, to respond to the uh, growing demands and investigate what funding opportunities we have to support that growth, but also uh, what um, infrastructure we may need, what, uh, what, what staffing, what uh, activities we need to support. So when an organization considers scaling, there are several options to, um, to do this. Uh, the first option is the organization just builds its independent organization with responsibility on control of operational and financial support. So it's a completely independent organization. But a second option is to partner with another organization that may support aspects of the operations and thus uh, leverage existing strengths. The third one would be for the organization to completely merge or incorporate with another organization, bringing specific strengths and brand recognition to augment the operations of that acquiring organization. I think we're Going to the next slide on this. So we, in our process of um, strategic planning, the, um, the group that has participated determined that a partnership will offer the most effective route to scale its offering. Now, we need to really understand what activities should IGSN control and what kind of organization should it seek as a partner. What can we hand over to a different organization that would then be in charge of, uh, different as of a different aspect or multiple aspects of what the IGSN currently does? And what do we really feel is essential for us to stay in charge of to ensure success in the long term? So, our next question set, I actually need to, um, is, can you go ahead? So, the first question that we have here is, based on the goals that we've identified, should IGSN focus its own activities and responsibilities on metadata and technical infrastructure? and then partner with a community building organization. So the IGSN staying more technical, the partner being largely focused on community building. More. Come on. <laughs> it's not that late. I'm going to go ahead and advance at 30 seconds. But we we'll have a little bit of time, so you can probably take a little bit more time with these if you need to. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, so behind me, there's a pet in the pit up, pet up a loser passing by. <laughs> All right, but let's, let's see. This seems to be fairly evenly. So the, the alternative, um, question is, should IGSN focus on the community building and rather partner with a technical infrastructure organization?
All right. It's, oh, there. There come more balls. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Fairly evenly distributed. Okay, you want to move on to the next? So clearly for us, uh, you know, we, we have to ask ourselves with who we partner. So what do you think? How important is it that a partner share our values? Obviously, we should have probably said more about what these values are in open and global and discipline agnostic. Uh, should I move to the next question? Yep. Why don't we go ahead? Because it is 21. So this is obviously a highly relevant question. How important is it that the partner be financially sustainable? Wow. Yep. <laughs> I can fully see that. A lot of support there. I think we're fairly stagnant. Ah, 14. Okay, great. And last but not least, um, the discussion has often revolved around discovery services uh, of the registered objects. So question here, how important is it that a partner have existing discovery services? Still coming in. Whoops, no. light is not active. That's weird. We probably should go ahead. Okay, right. We have just two minutes left, but uh, handed, uh, handing over to, to Sarah. Let's... Okay, so we were going to take a look at the results of the second half of the questions we get there. Um, but I have to say, in going through all of this, it was very interesting, uh, very similar to the outcomes that IGSN 2040 has been looking at, where there is this, we're not sure which is best, um, a community-partnered yeah. organization or a technical organization, but those both stood out as being important, and I, I feel like that's <laughs> coming out of the results of these polls as well. And that was something, too, I like, yep, it was very important to us on on in our, I'm trying to remember what the term was, the make it or break it type question. So that sharing values was important to us as well. And it's good to get that reinforcement that the community also thinks that that's an important topic to maintain. Um, let's see, and financial stability is important. And actually looking at the time since we have a minute left, Laura, do you wanna add anything or should I continue going through the last few questions? No, I think it's um, it would be maybe important for Kirsten just to add what we're gonna be doing, what the next steps are for the I just sent 2040 project. I don't see any questions in the crowdcast box. So Kirsten, maybe you just talk about next steps for 2040. All right, yes. So we are actually, um, about 90% through our strategic planning effort. Um, we are now basically, um, we have completed most of our phase of information gathering through stakeholder interviews or group focus, uh, focus groups such as this. Um, so 
now our next steps are actually going to be uh, identifying organizations that uh, we can partner with and uh, stepping into more detailed discussions with them uh, over the next to over the next months these discussions will happen and we plan uh, at the end by the end of march to bring um, suggestions recommendations to the membership of the igsn ev and uh, we will also um, make the strategic planning process further available on our website uh, at igsn.org and if you have any questions about this whole uh, strategic planning process and uh, how ultimately <laughs> decisions are made, which directions they go, please don't hesitate to contact us. We would be very interested to hear also more from what you got out of this session, if it was useful in any way. And um, if you have any questions to the IGSN anyway, uh, more than happy to, to answer that. Great. Um, the DOI for the slides is in the chat box. It's also on the slides themselves. And um, the address, which is again included by the pictures here, is info at igsn.org um, if you'd like to um, get more information on what's going on. So thank you, everyone, uh, for participating. And I think we are getting moved off the stage to allow for Luke to join. <laughs> so, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Lori, Kirsten, and, and Sarah. Thank you, that was, that was great. Round of applause. I think this is a really important topic. We love to talk about persistent identifiers, but the persistence of the organizations and initiatives that support those identifiers is an equally crucial topic. So appreciate all that you've been doing in that regard. So if there are any further questions, please hound our speakers in Slack and continue the discussion. And we'll have a few minutes of transition time while we bring up the next speakers for the next session. So thank you again. Bye.